Those seasonal patterns are very interesting. And the thing you got to understand about seasonal patterns, they happen for reasons, right? It's not like they're by accident. Uh, sometimes it depends on inflows and outflows of money in different funds. Give me, give me more PayPal shares now. Give me them. I want them all. I want every freaking share. Give me them all. From kind of a perspective of, of let's say, like, what are the orders coming in for Tolly Moly? What's the guidance? The conference call is going to be really important. Hats in the Howdy, way. folks. They really hello. Need, they need to be put hello. In their hello. 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 Oh, Defensive what is this? Nature to them and why would that change anytime soon so you're getting a little bit of everything yes so i, I think those names are, are going to continue to hold your horses what we got here report paypal ramping up new features to compete with apple pay and stripe okay Teams across payment tech giant PayPal are rushing to add a raft of new features to make its digital wallet and online checkout more appealing to shoppers and merchants, according to a media report. As if they weren't already appealing enough, they're taking it to another level, right? The company's new CEO, Alex Chris, is ramping up efforts to defend itself against competitors such as Stripe, Apple Pay, in a project codenamed Quantum Leap. Okay, Mr. Alex Chris, let's freaking go, dude. That's what I'm talking about. The information reported citing two of the company's employees. Uh, the initiative aims to mark meaningful progress by January with the aim to roll out changes as early as March. Whoa. The report said, citing an internal document. Ooh, interesting. Internal document. It's seeking to boost growth and profits by getting more shoppers and merchants to use PayPal products, which are more profitable than the company's Braintree products. Improving the checkout experience was named the top enterprise priority in the document. Okay. Quantum Leap reportedly includes streamlining the, the checkout process, redesigning PayPal's consumer app, and quicker integration for merchants and other, among other features. Give me, give me more PayPal shares now. Give me them. I want them all. I want every freaking share give me them all sometimes you just wake up and you say i need more paypal shares right now give me give me them. all right so anyways let's get rolling here folks let's get rolling um okay so uh the Orange line is this year, right, up until a couple days ago. And so the black line is traditional seasonal patterns for the Russell 2000, Russell 1000 since 1979. So technically right around this time is usually when you see a big pullback in the Russell, right? Now, this would actually kind of make sense a little bit because I always think about what could cause a lot of confusion in the market because usually... Uh, whatever happens in the market is usually the most confusing thing to happen in the market. And this would cause a lot of folks to really think, oh, it's not small caps time yet, right? Like if you got a, pull a pullback in the Russell for, let's say, the remainder of this month, so the next three weeks or whatever, right? A lot of people would think, oh, small caps is not their time yet. It's not their time yet. Their time, you know, maybe a few years from now or a year from now or whatever, but it's not their time, right? Not understanding that that's a that's a seasonal pattern with small caps is they pull back in uh, you know basically starting in December they usually you know go up at the very beginning of December and then start pulling back pull back and then they go on a beast run January February March so we'll see how it plays out but you know I always think about what could trick everybody into thinking like one thing's going to happen and and you know get everybody to believe oh that's not going to happen small caps still not their time and then all of a sudden they go on a beast run so very possible and um i mean a lot of those smalls have already had an incredible run this year just to be honest so i don't know we'll see we'll see how it plays out but those seasonal patterns are very interesting and the thing you got to understand about seasonal patterns they happen for reasons right it's not like they're by accident uh Sometimes it depends on inflows and outflows of money in different funds. Sometimes it can be technical traders making moves based upon this, right? If you're somebody that looks and puts a lot of weight into these patterns, 
You're going to make your buy and sell decisions, your trading decisions, which much of the market is trading. They're not thinking about the next five years with the stock. They're thinking about the next five days and the next five weeks with the stock, right? So if you're more into the trading activity, you're going to look at something like this. You're going to say, I need to sell my smalls uh, right now because the next few weeks are going to be rough. And then I need to buy them back at the end of December, right? I mean, technically... Technically, you'd want to buy them back if, if this was to play out before the end of December. Technically, you'd want to buy them back oh, slightly before Christmas, technically. Um, and so there's traders that make moves based upon that, right? They're going to look at something like this and they say, I need to dump out of my smalls right now. And I'll get it back in them, you know, just before Christmas time. And then we'll roll for the last week of December and then we'll roll into January, February, March. So that's an important thing to understand about you know, how individuals in the market think, right? Uh, okay, so, oh yeah, Chewy's reporting tomorrow after the bell. Uh, Toll Brothers is today. So, and then this Mondo DB company that a lot of people are throwing into the AI category is reporting as well after the bell. David Busters is reporting as well after the bell, and Box is reporting today after the bell. Obviously, Toll is the one I'm looking the most forward to. Okay, so, let's take a peek here. Neo reported earnings this morning, eh? So let's see Neo IR. My hunch is it was probably a messy earnings, as it always is. Stock is absolutely nothing, up 1% <laughs> after the earnings. Wow. Unaudited results. Okay. Okay, so deliveries 55,000. That compares with deliveries of 31,000 at this time last year. So that's good. And vehicle sales were up 142%. Vehicle margin was 11% in the third quarter compared with 16.4% in the third quarter of 2022. You know, that just means they're facing insane pricing pressure. I mean, the fact that your production would go up immensely on a year over year basis and your margin would go down that much just it just means you're facing a lot and i mean a lot of um headwinds in regards to pricing because as an automaker or any company that manufactures you know big physical products the more scale you have the more you're producing the more profitable and the better margins you should have in theory so to see that's very troubling total revenues in the quarter, we're up about 117%. Gross profit, $208 million, a decrease 12% year over year, despite revenue being up 100 plus percent. Gross margin, 8% compared to 13%. Hmm. Net loss. Increased for the company, so net law. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! What net loss came in six hundred and twenty-four million dollars in the third quarter for the company? It's an increase of ten point eight percent year over year. What a mess! So good news is the company supposedly still has six point two billion dollars of cash on their balance sheet. Which means essentially they can continue to burn money here for a bit. In September and October 2023, 2023 the company completed an offering of $575 million uh, aggregate principal amount of three, at 3.87%. 3 convertible senior notes due 2029 and $575 million uh, at 4.62% that are going to be due in 2030. Okay. So, I don't even know why the company should have needed more money considering how much they have in cash on the balance sheet. Like, But then again, they are burning money like it's nobody's business. up this EC6 Neo EC6 
A little bit of a wannabe Model Y? <laughs> Doesn't it look like a little bit of a model, wannabe Model Y? But then from this angle, it looks like a little bit of a wannabe Audi Porsche. Hmm. Yeah, it's definitely not a a bad looking vehicle. It's not a bad looking vehicle, huh? I mean, it reminds me a little bit of Tesla, but also reminds me a little bit of traditional automakers. Um, and kind of look and feel of it. What do you guys think, chat? Do you like it? Do you not like it? This is our new vehicle, the EC6. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Hmm. Hmm. Well, a digital cockpit, they call it. That's funny. few people saying they like it. It's okay. Yeah, that's how I feel. I'm kind of like, I think it's okay. I think, you know, would I drive it? Hey, yeah, I would drive it. I think it's uh, fine. It is something that makes me say, oh my gosh, I, I gotta have that vehicle. It's amazing. No, but um, overall, I think it, it's good, right? But I mean, the problem is their, their business model is just a mess. Let's see what the CEO and CFO said. Neo delivered 55,000 vehicles in the third quarter 2023, representing solid growth, blah, blah, blah. Corner retail sales out of China Automotive and Research Center. Neo ranked first in battery electric vehicle uh, market segment, priced over RMB 300,000 in China, a market share of 45%. Okay, so they're putting themselves into the higher category. We have, com we have recently completed a thorough review of the company's two-year operating plans, to determine our objective priorities in action plans. Meanwhile, we have identified opportunities to optimize our organization, reduce costs, and enhance in, uh, efficiency. Our focus remains on advancing core technologies, developing key products, and expanding sales and service capabilities. We are confident in NEO's long-term competitiveness in the electric, in electric vehicle market at a Mr. Lee. Our vehicle margins increased to 11% in the third quarter of 2023, attributed to elevated average selling prices, ongoing vehicle cost reduction, and economies of scale, added the chief financial officer. In September and October 2023, NEO completed an offering of $1.15 billion, as we spoke about before. So, I don't know, man. I mean, NEO vehicles seem nice. I think they're fine, but the company's a mess on the financial front. AutoZone, I do wonder about AutoZone long term, and when I say long term, I'm really talking about like the next decade, and the reason being is, you know, with obviously electric vehicles becoming much more popular in this decade, right, 2020 through 2030, I do wonder like past 2030, if there's going to be nearly as much of a need for places like AutoZone in the future, we'll see, but you know, that's that's obviously a long time out. For right now, there's so many internal combustion engines out there that AutoZone can continue to prosper. So, uh, total company, same store sales up 2.1%. Wow. I didn't even know they had international stores. Really? That's intriguing. I just want to see their income statement here. So, net sales... Up to almost $4.2 billion from three point nine, dollars or just under four in the same quarter last year. Cost of sales actually dropped for the company, so their gross profit came to $2.2 billion from just under $2 billion in the same quarter last year. Operating SG&A was up for the company year over year. Uh, operating profit, EBIT, earnings before interest and taxes, $848 million or $723 million in the same quarter last year. Interest expense of $91 million, so that's quite a bit of interest expense there. Um, quite an increase on a year-over-year -year basis, right? Uh, $57 million in the same quarter last year. 
Income before taxes, $757 million for 665. Income tax expense was 163 versus 125. So net income came in at $593 million versus four, uh, $539 million in the same quarter last year. EPS was up substantially year over year, $33.51 versus $28 in the same quarter last year. AutoZone usually is buying back a ton of shares. So good for AutoZone. They're usually one you can count on that always comes through with good numbers. Get in the zone, auto zone. There it is. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Get in the zone, auto zone. That's a little nostalgic tone there. So, yeah. Okay. Um, here we go. Market close activity going on. Full fiscal year of declining sales for Apple and for this current holiday quarter that we're in now, Scott, Apple saying Just buy Tiffany's? Are, we're no. expected to be flat year over year. So investors have been looking for Apple to return to that top line revenue growth and seem to be... We're going to be above Tiffany's. Tiffany's, ugh, big corporate Tiffany's, that's like, that's for poor people. We're, we're like above that. We're above Tiffany's. First time in a few months. You know, it's just, it's one of these things. First of all, every year people seem to rediscover that it's a holiday shopping beneficiary. And whether it's true or not, and get, you get a huge push in sales or not, people feel like it is. It makes a lot of sense that it is. Um, and it also is sort of splits the difference between the sort of hyper growth, it's an NVIDIA, it's a Microsoft AI story, and it's just kind of a boring <laughs> yeah. defensive type thing. So I, I, I run out of sort of edgy, smart things to say about Apple because it just does its own thing. It's not really a reflection of a lot else that's going on except for its own heft and dominance. Yeah, and the reason I want to go custom is, is a couple of reasons uh, and kind of my thought process in regards to that. One is uh, people are looking for more custom tailored products for them nowadays i think than, than ever before when it comes to something special like that secondly a lot of people are getting married way later in life right it, like you know previous generations like people got married in their 20s and they really didn't have much money nowadays a lot of these people are finally getting married when they're already millionaires multimillionaires, like when they're already you know 30s mid 30s late 30s 40s because everything's kind of getting pushed back like people having kids is getting pushed back so a lot of people are have way more money when they go to get married than they did in in obviously previous generations when you know they were really tight on money and those sorts of things so just another kind of thought process i the have billions in october were quote not as strong as they were in the third quarter that spooked investors he says he said at the time we didn't see growth in october like it was in the third quarter and he pointed out uh, some weakness there in travel and entertainment. T and E there. Goods and services, he said, remained relatively strong. And then for context, Amex's growth in the third quarter was about seven percent. He did say November billings were in line with Q3, and that U.S. consumer retail was very strong. He said from Thanksgiving all the way to Cyber Monday, he was quote encouraged That's by good. that. That's He pointed to their more affluent client base. He says he's not seeing a slowdown in demand for those premium fee-paying cardholders. Did say they're seeing double digit growth still in international billings, which is one of the move. Margin. Look at that move in Amex straight down and then boop, what a move. My gosh. I don't know if it really should have slid there. And that's Broadcom. Yeah. This week. Um, this is the stock that the bull. Somebody said uh, AutoZone gets my business for wipers, bulbs, touch up paint, waxes. Yeah. No doubt. AutoZone. I used to go to AutoZone all the time back in the day. And the older car you have, the more you're going to go to somewhere like AutoZone. Mondo DB is first. Uh, Christina. Oh, Mondo Martin, DB. DB. Nice. Yeah, it's another software as a service company hit hard, missing across the board oh, with its box. Q3 earnings report. Got EPS box. was two cents light on revenues of $262 million. Also light. I caught up, though, with the CEO, uh, Aaron Levy, who said, or Levy, I should say, who said that they received less money than expected for the sale of data center equipment as they continue to migrate to the cloud, aka pricing for the secondhand equipment market is falling. As for Q4 guidance, both earnings and revenues, also a miss. The company blaming weakness in international markets and currency headwinds, considering one third of their total revenues comes outside of the U.S., with the majority priced in yen, so the strong U.S. dollar didn't help their guidance. And and that's why you're seeing shares drop uh, dramatically about eight percent all right yeah rough environment for aaron levy there um 
Adam, we got MongoDB and Asana that we also expect to hear from. Asana sometimes time. moves Mongo's big. Mongo's the top weighted name in WCLD Cloud Index, which has been up about 20%, I think, since the November 1st low. How important is a Asana name moving like down so far, 3.5%. Some of these cloud names can continue to run? Yeah, I think they're Still waiting on toll. Yeah, it's hard with these Ooh, Mondo DB is down big, 8.6% already. Moves, so it's really hard Dave and Buster is down 5.7%. Uh, you know, Box down 8.8%. And Asana is down as well. And so, you know, the companies that sell really critical products are going to benefit, and others that are perhaps more on the periphery of importance, you know, they could fall by the wayside, and you've probably seen that play out a little bit. You know, Avago later this week is going to be more interesting play. And then Oracle is going to be coming, uh, you know, in the next week or two. They're also going to be provide critical insight. So <laughs> it's hard to kind of extrapolate some of these mid cap names. <laughs> so <laughs> Siggy said, Jeremy, it's Mongo, not Mondo. <laughs> I want to keep calling him Mondo. Like, you know, the, like the movie, the Mondo Burger. What movie is that? Are they making the Mondo Burgers in, the, in that movie? Around the corner. What movie is that? Eugene. Yeah, it's, it's surprising with MongoDB. It's a data storage company, and they did beat for Q3. Earnings per share came in at 96 EPS cents beat. a share when the street was expecting 50 cents. So that's a 46 cent beat on $433 million in revenue for Q4. Strong Q4 revenue guidance, strong Q4 EPS guidance. Uh, so I'm going through the report, too, relatively positive. So I'll have to get back to you on why we're seeing this uh, stock drop, which is lifted off the lows of 8% now. Switching over to Asana, which is also a software as a service company, what we're seeing is a smaller loss per share than expected at four cents so the company lost four cents in q3 the street was expecting 11 cent loss on revenues of 167 million dollars that's a, a little bit higher than anticipated uh the q4 loss per share guidance so again the company is not profitable uh that came in a little bit smaller uh than the loss i should say smaller than anticipated so that's a strength so overall strength for the guidance uh and a beat on q3 for um, asana software as a service and but you can see both these companies just dropping dramatically could have something to do with box that we spoke about earlier I too, mean, just across the board it's Concerns not that dramatic space six percent i'll take it christina thank or you morgan Thanks. Shares of CVS getting a healthy bounce today as the company revamps how it prices prescription drugs. We're going to talk to a portfolio manager who holds the stock. All right, here's a sauna for you guys here. All right, now I'm going to work on Dave and Buster's. What movie is this from? Buster! The Buster brought me back. The Buster brought me back. What movie? But yeah, he lives in Vegas. And I was like, what? Nicolas Cage lives in Vegas? I was surprised at that. Because I had no clue. He lives in like a weird community too. Like one of those communities that was like really super nice probably like 50 years ago. But now I don't want to say it's that nice. Um, okay, so... Uh, what else do we have here? Still? Still? No? Freaking earnings? What is this? They're going to build something in Phoenix? Oh, look at this. 456-unit luxury rental community in Phoenix. I might have heard something about this. Uh, project being financed, $86 million construction loan facility, Santander Bank, equity and debt. Were arranged by Toll Brothers. Um, Lumar is located in the heart of Deer Valley Submarket in North Phoenix, just 10 minute drive from Taiwan Semiconductor. Huh. <sighs> okay. All right, somebody says net income earnings per share uh, 445 million, 411, compared to 640. Okay. So, yeah, no one really cares that much about the current numbers. They're mainly looking at it um, from kind of a perspective of, of, let's say, like, what are the orders coming in for Tolly Moly? What's the guidance? The conference call is going to be really important with the CEO and CFO on kind of what they're seeing in the housing market overall. So, it's amazing. Everybody in the world has Toll Brother numbers except for me. And where do I look for Toll Brother numbers? Where the place you're supposed to look for the Toll Brother numbers and they still don't have them up. Like, come on, Tolly Moly. Like, what are we doing here, man? Well, anyways, 
Okay, so Tully Mully's up slightly after hours. We'll see. We'll listen to their conference call, if we can get access to that conference call, uh, tomorrow. Because their conference call happens in the morning. But we'll listen to it probably after the market closes tomorrow. And uh, we'll listen to that together. And I think that could actually be a good learning opportunity for folks to kind of, uh, you know, hear how I listen to a conference call, what I think is interesting, important, those sorts of things. Uh, Mondo, Mondo, even though it's Mongo, Mondo is down about... 3.6%. Holy smoke, has that caught me off guard? Uh, Dave and Busters, uh, appreciate the gift. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Dave and Busters, down about 3% after hours here. We have Box down about 11% plus here after hours, and Asana is down about 8% after hours. And if you missed earlier, we spoke about small cap seasonality usually over the next week or two. Usually small caps are weak, and then they start to strengthen, uh, let's call it slightly before Christmas. Uh, Earnings, so yeah, we went over all those babies. Tomorrow after the bell, C3AI and Chewy's reporting. Uh, C3AI gets put into the category of kind of like uh, Palantir, even though, you know. I think everybody that's Palantir Bull would say that's not not right. But anyways, that goes on. Thursday is going to be a really fun day. Because you have DocuSign, which is interesting, but then you have Lululemon, RH, and Vail Resorts all reporting. I call them three rich people stocks. So that should be really interesting. And we will listen to the RH conference call live, live on Thursday after the bell. That's going to be a really fun one, folks. So uh, with that being said, everybody else in the world has told me the numbers except me. We will go over the toll numbers in depth tomorrow if they finally have them on the website tomorrow, (laughs) hopefully. And uh, that should be fun. And then C minus for Asana, uh, a D grade balance or income statement for Dave and Busters. Hey, a D for Dave. And uh, Box got a C minus for theirs. Okay. All right, folks. I appreciate you joining me. Thanks so much for being here as always. And other than that, folks, I will see you tomorrow. Other than uh, on the main channel tonight. So much love, folks. Have a great one. Peace.